I would just want to talk about, can we just talk about comments on people's Facebook pages? Yep, I'm getting ready. I'm going to, I have to say this because this type of stuff that, that be going on on social media is freaking ridiculous. First of all, I'm going to make this very clear. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm, about to tell, I'm about to tell the people what, what, I'm, what we're talking about. What's going on, Kept by God, Aquarius Parks? Okay, come on with the name. I know that's right, Kept by God, Aquarius say, Parks. Don't even get it twisted. I'm Kept by God. Is this Jersey Parks? Because if it's the person that I think it is, girl, how you doing? I can't see. I can't see that far. Yes. Thank you, Tyra. I want to talk I about it. I already know what this is about. Okay, I had to think about it. I'm, and I'm going to try not to get too Jersey right now, okay? First of all, when people make comments, Natasha. Okay, hey, Natasha. What's going on, Natasha? Yes, girl, how you doing? That's where I kill. Okay, you got you. you be all loud slapping on the table. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited because I ain't, we ain't been before the people in a minute. Okay, I keep going with my first of all. First of all, let me say this. It's Tasha, not Tarsha. I know, but I know her. That's how you say her name. I know her. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. First of all, I keep going back to first of all. Let me say this. When people make a comment, meaning, or let me take that back. When people make a statement on their Facebook page, either you gonna respond Put some respect on their name. The name come up respect it. I ain't gonna say it no respect more. Respect on their name, or you gonna just keep on moving. Keep on sliding, keep on scrolling, keep on doing you. Because when I see crazy statements that people make on their page, when I see crazy posts, when I see people doing stuff unprofessional, I don't say nothing. Cause guess what? It ain't none of my business. And I cannot change anyone's personal opinion. I cannot change a person's mindset about how they feel about anything that they post on their page. If they posted it, they wanted to post it. So I feel like if you don't have nothing positive to say, be quiet. And I'm going to say this for my page. If I say something on my page that you don't like, one or two things get ready to happen. First of all, I'm not gonna let you pull me out of where I'm supposed to be at in the spirit. <laughs> don't and, try to blame me so much. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna let y'all pull me out of the spirit and have me in my flesh and going back and forth with you on my page. What I'm not gonna do is be unprofessional, that's one. Second thing I'm not gonna do is argue back and forth with somebody off of something I said you don't agree with that you don't agree with and three i'm not gonna let anybody bring me out my character so i won't i have no problem with sliding in your dm and blocking you till jesus come how about them apples to jesus come back to jesus come how <laughs> yeah, about them yeah, apples yeah, because at the end of the day if i don't if i don't like something that you want to put on my page and I definitely don't want to argue with you since I'm blocking you, bro. I'm going to just block you. And it's fine. We don't got to have no more affiliation on social media. But what we ain't going to do is argue back and forth. My opinion is my opinion. You don't like it. Keep it scrolling and just don't like it. It's that simple. But you know what? Even before we get into what we really came on here to talk about, why is it oh, goodness. that in 2020, and this, mm. this goes right into what we're going to talk about. Let me, let me sip on my water. Why is it in 2020, if we have a difference of opinion, mm -hmm. that we got to fall out? Right. What happened to us having conversation and just sometimes just agreeing to disagree? Right. So that brings me to my topic. Okay. This uh, Ice Cube's contract with <laughs> Black America. <laughs> now, Keena and I already have our opinion, but we want to hear from y'all tonight. What y'all think about the contract with Black America? How do you feel that Ice Cube reached out to both the Biden-Harris camp and the mm. Trump-Pence camp? And mm. the Biden-Harris camp said, hey, we hear you. We're going to holler back at you after the election. Mm -hmm. Trump said, okay, come on, come on in. We're going to bring you in. And we gonna and they modified the plan to the platinum plan. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you these, these terms are... are are relevant to you you've been watching the news you've been reading whatever should ice cube have or have not sat down 
Well, can you can you give the people a little information on what's what's in the platinum plan? Okay, so the platinum plan was the plan that uh, President Trump put together, mm-hmm. and this is what he said he was going to do for Black America. Now, it has not been done yet. Will it be done in the next election if he's fortunate enough to win? We'll see. But Ice Cube was clapping back on people. He was saying, hey, um, this gentleman has been in politics a long time. And we have. No, no, go ahead and just. Why you say gentleman? Oh, you're right. He said Biden been in office for 47 plus years. Mm Mm-hmm. So why didn't he do this? And I was watching a lot of commentary on this. Why didn't he do this when he was in elect when he was in office with President Obama? Mm-hmm. So black people all over America's mad and trying to. First of all, you can't cancel Ice Cube. How you gonna cancel Ice Cube, <laughs> bro? NWA Ice Cube. How you gonna cancel this dude? He first of all. From where they're from, they've been talking about politics in their rap music forever. So how you gonna try to cancel somebody who been doing this for a long time? Like, bro, get out of here. Y'all can't cancel Ice Cube. But, but I guess the thing that I don't understand is why people, and I want to hear y'all comments, why are people so mad that he tried to sit out with both sides? One side said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna move this con- this, this conversation to later. We got an election we're trying to win. That's the hot. That's the hot. The Harris Biden camp." And then one camp said, hey, we already in office. Let's, let's see what you got. Why is black America mm-hmm. so mad with this man? Can someone please help me understand? He says, look, I'm not pledging my allegiance to any camp. I'm not endorsing any candidate. I just want to see black America move forward. And social media, black Twitter, been giving my man the business. Mm-hmm. Help me understand why, y'all. You know, it's like if you don't go along with what other people's ideologies are, their thought process, what they believe in, and you say something opposite, then all of a sudden you the, you you the you the wicked witch of the west. Like you just right. like you're the baddest person ever because you don't agree. But his thing is, I get where he coming from. He's like, okay, well this is where we are. Somebody got to come to the table with something. I ain't seen none of the other rappers coming to the table because I believe now after him, now Diddy want to come to the table with something. Diddy coming to the table with something. I ain't seen it yet, but now Diddy want to come up and he got his plan. But But, here's my thing. Okay. We all recognize, and I'm not saying whether Cube was right or wrong. I think he has great intentions. Many are saying that he's letting the, the right meaning the, cons- the conservatives, the Republicans, whatever term you want to use. Many are saying he's letting the right manipulate and abuse him. Um, and that he shouldn't have sat down. This is one of the arguments mm-hmm. I heard today. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's playing into the narrative. Now, you can agree or disagree. This I'm just reporting what I'm seeing. So he's catching flack about even having the conversation. But my question is, how are we supposed to move the narrative forward if no one will even sit down with the other side when we have a difference of opinion? It's called mm-hmm. negotiation. Mm-hmm. And when the other side, whether you like them or not, has has a position and a platform where they can push your agenda forward, I don't understand why we mad. Mm. Now, I'm going to say this. Whether you love or hate President Trump, that's a hey, whatever he does or does not do in the platinum plan may or may not change your opinion about him. And that is okay with Keenan and I. But what he did do, or what he's proposing to do, mm-hmm. is put $500 billion up for black businesses. Now, I was watching, uh, and I'll call, well, I, yeah, I'll call his name because he's a public figure. Roland Martin, he has a, a radio show on YouTube. And he said, hey, the $500 billion is, is going to do this. He had a difference of opinion. He didn't believe it was going to go to where he said it was. Okay. Now, if you also read the platinum plan, he said, I'm going to give churches and black communities the opportunity okay. to, to, um, to write proposals for contract awards so they can use that money to uplift their community. Mm-hmm. Um, they talked about police reform. He, you know, you got the first steps act. He talking about now doing the second step act, but I'm still like wherever you are in this political conversation, I'm still I'm still not understanding why everyone wants to counsel Ice Cube. And I will say this, had he not been Ice Cube, 
would any administration probably sat down with him? No. Mm-hmm. He said the Biden camp reached out to him, and he said that the Trump camp reached out to him. Only one camp sat down, and black people all across America, from D.L. Hughley on down, is like cancel ice cube. Well, they did the same thing to Steve Harvey when he went. And I don't understand that. How are we supposed to move the conversation forward? I understand that you may or may not like President Trump, but if he's in a position where he can move the conversation forward, I think personally, you should take the opportunity. Now, only time will tell if he actually does something. Mm -hmm. We'll figure out real soon if this was just uh, a political ploy. But if you don't sit down, you ain't never going to know. Right. So Miyoshi says, exactly, someone got to sit at the table. If you got a voice and using it for the right reasons, why not? And like I said, his, his purposes, right. I felt, were noble. Right. But if you don't sit down, then how, how are our voices supposed to be heard? And, mm-hmm. I, and there's a few other people, and, and one of the things he did do, now I'm not saying that what he did was right or wrong, but what he did do, he got civil rights leaders together. He got all these different people that were experts in their categories, and they all came together and helped him with his plan. He says, look, I'm okay. I wrote the plan. I want feedback. Help me find the areas that are weak. Help me bolster those areas so I can create a plan for us. Mm-hmm. So I felt like his intentions were noble, but social media is tearing him a new one. And Ice Cube is not an unintelligent person. Right. Ice Cube is very smart. Now, is he a politician? No. And he said it in one of his interviews today, a couple of days ago. He says, look, I shouldn't have been the one to bring this to the table. But no one else has done it all this time. Mm-hmm. So what are we supposed to do, Black America? I'm, I mean, you can't even be mad at it. But I can't. I'm not. You know, this country is so driven by hatred right now and anger. So it's like as soon as someone does something opposite what's going on Kia? what the narrative that has been driven via all media platforms right as soon as somebody goes or bucks against that then all of a sudden you're uh you're 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 in you're in trump land and that's not necessarily the case so what i guess the question i got people mad at council ice cube which i think is crazy hey kia Council Ice Cube. So who would Black America want it to have went to the table? Would you been okay if Van Jones would have sat down? <laughs> would you been okay mm-hmm. with Roland Martin? Would you have have, have you had? Would you have treated anybody in Black America this way? It just happens to be Ice Cube today. But the question I got is, when are we gonna go to the table and have the conversation? For the first time in my lifetime, we're actually openly talking about race relations on a on the global stage in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And the moment that somebody puts their hand up and say, hey, I got some some ideas, will you at least listen to them? And now the world, for the first time in the U.S. that I'm aware of, I'm not talking about Martin Luther King. I'm talking about in the 21st century. Mm-hmm. We have some real challenges going on in our community. And this man steps up and says, hey, I got some things I've been thinking about. I've I'm, and he says, hey, I'm good financially. I don't really need the improvement, but I'm not even doing this for me. I'm doing my this people. for my people. Mm-hmm. And we hang this man on the cross, and I don't understand. Right. And, and I mean, it's just, it's unfortunate. And I just feel like these days somebody's got to stand or we just all going to fall. And I, I feel like, Biden should have just had the conversation. And this is my own personal opinion. He should have just had the conversation, had the conversation with Ice Cube, period. And then this wouldn't be so much of a back and forth because say he would have met with Biden and then say he would have met with Trump. Nobody would have, Nobody nothing, to would have nothing to say. But it, did, it didn't happen like that. And my question is, why didn't it happen like that? Like, right. why why wouldn't he take that opportunity? You can't blame it on COVID. You can't blame it on this. Like, what what is it? Because you, everybody get else getting interviews with you. So, right. I mean, I just don't understand. And this is not a bash because, first of all, let me be clear. Let me be all the way clear, okay? We're not on here saying that we are left or we're right. We're having a conversation, conversation. Because right. people quick to comment on somebody's live and to comment on somebody's video and automatically assume something that people never even said. So let's just get that clear. Can we have healthy conversations? So Miyoshi in the comments says, 
I think he was sincere, but the president used his full own personal agenda. Miosha, you may or may you may or may not be right. We don't know yet. Now, is it, it is true that he did say, "Hey, Ice Cube met with us," but what we don't know yet is if he's actually going to do the things he's prescribed in this platinum plan. Facts. So. Right now, I understand that's how it looks. And I'm not saying that's the case or not. We're just having a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Somebody else says, because um, we so used to being slaves. Well, you know, that that's a touchy subject for me. And I'm not even going to touch the whole white privilege thing today because that's touchy for me. So I'm going I'm to let that go. But I hear what you're saying, um, Tedra. You don't want to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that because my views are going to be very controversial and I'm not even trying to go back and forth with people today. That's sad. But I but I have my views for why I feel the way I feel. Mm -hmm. I would like that person to elaborate on that. Yeah, TJ, please. You know what? You're going to make me go there. See? <laughs> but I ain't trying to have the people mad with me I mean, I really, I really want to know. I want to, I wish they could elaborate on that a little bit more. And, um. And, so is that, in? are you saying that um, Ice Cube is kind of uh, having the mindset. Of, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to assume. I just I want them to respond back to that because I might be reading into that in a in a different in, in light. a way. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't want to take wrong it with out having of context. a heart to heart conversation. We're all adults. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And these conversations uh, need to be said. And I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of a lot of black pastors. You know, this entire time that Donald Trump has been in office, you know, had been going to the White House. Micah Stanley, they they tried to cancel him because mm -hmm. he was up there singing and he laid hands on the man. I mean, somebody need to be laying hands on the man because we sure need him to make right decisions. We need him to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit some kind of way. And people wanted to cancel Micah Stanley. I felt so bad for him. Did you see that? I did. So here's the question. Here's the pink elephant in the room. There's a possibility that he's going to get reelected and black people is upset. But if, if, if we have to do another four years, don't you want or not, but there's a possibility that he may get reelected for four more years. And so if you put all your hopes and dreams on Biden Harris being in office, you may or may not be disappointed. So what are we going to do then? And here's the reality. Black people, we make up. 13% of the population. Of the population. And, uh, and let's see, what is it? We're 13%. But the Mexicans are, let's see, that sounds familiar. They're what? 16%. Okay, they're 16%. I mean, so my thing is. we Y'all, we don't make up that much of a vote, y'all. I mean, the reality is most of us don't vote. Um, we were we were we were recently educated by someone that was telling us that in a lot of the lower income communities that people don't even have IDs, which we were like, what? Because you know, how do you not have an ID? Like, dude, you get if you get a check, even if you get some from the state, you gotta have some type of ID. And that person was like, no, really, they they do not have a lot of people do not have IDs. So we've been knocking door to door. Our church has been going. That, that person was telling us that their church had been going door to door with their van, picking people up, taking people to get IDs so that they can vote. And that was just, that was one of those realities that kind of hit us like, wow, I never thought about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I guess we're so used to, you know, what, where we live and what we got going on. And we don't even, it's not even a thought. It's like an automatic thinking that everybody has a driver's license or everybody has some type of ID, even if it's not a license, something, right. you know, and of course it's being made difficult to vote without, they want you to have a, a driver's license. I don't even know if the um, regular ID, I guess if it's not from the DMV, it's gotta be state issued. It's gotta be state issued. Then they won't even allow you, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a messed up situation. So like, I wasn't even aware of that. And I was like, dang, you know, what can we do to help? But you know, the last time I voted, I'm being honest. I don't think I showed my ID. You know, we live somewhere different. Dude. <laughs> I, don't think, mm. I don't think I showed my ID. Mm. Now that I think about it. Okay. But you know, I digress. So, um, you know, so that we kind of want to talk about that, but I guess, the other thing we want to talk about, if you guys want to chime in on what's going on with Ice Cube, I would love to hear your your thoughts and your comments. Absolutely. Um, 
but because uh, I don't believe what we're seeing on social media is the is how the majority of Black America feels about this. Just just my opinion. Well, can we talk about the town hall? <laughs> Let's talk about the town, town hall. hall. I, the town hall was interesting. Did you guys watch both of the town halls, both the Pence and well, not Pence, the Trump town hall and the Biden town hall? Did y'all watch both of them? Well, I watched both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I watched both of them, and I'm going to say this. I did not feel like they were, they were equal. I did not feel like the questions were equal to both candidates. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I felt like uh, on one side, whether you love or hate the people involved, and I don't know what side of the spectrum you may be on, but I felt when I watched the Biden um, town hall, I felt they let, they let him speak, and they let him express himself freely. And when I watched the Trump town hall, he found himself arguing with the uh, with the commentator. Now, well, he well, does argue with everybody, though. Look, he does, but he's very defensive. He, sh- he he should be able to express himself freely, um, just like Biden's able to express himself freely. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if it's fair. Mm. And I felt like Trump has been a kind of been you know right, wrong, and different. I feel like he's been under the, under the assault of the media. For, oh yeah. Any, um, anytime, anytime there's an there's an opportunity for him to get dragged. But they're gonna drag him now. That's happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's happening. He's gonna get drugged. That's happening. But that's um, happening. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I only heard one. So fill us in. Well, I mean, I felt that rightfully so. Trump had to do a lot of defending of his record and what he's gonna do going forward, and. Maybe he was attacked so much because he does have incumbency, meaning he's currently in the seat and he's trying to get the seat back. So maybe it's fair Mm. that he's judged more harshly than the person trying to get the seat. Um, But I think he should be judged harshly in some in some aspects because we had a lot of things that happened in 2020. And well, you know, his the whole four years. But in 2020, you know, we've had a lot of racial divide. And well, well, you know, wait, 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 hold on, on. I'm gonna let you talk. Hold on, because I think that um, the American people really want to know the answers to some of these questions that he's been asked, and he's kind of like, "Yo, I'm not," and I need y'all to understand because I'm from up north, like I'm from, I'm from, I'm from Jersey, and I know, you know, Trump, he's a northerner, and he's like, "Yo, I'm not gonna keep answering these questions. I've already answered these questions, but I feel like it is his." duty and responsibility responsibility that when he is asked those questions no matter how many times he still should answer them mm. but because of you know his personality you he's know, a new yorker and, and i'm not saying it's right because it does i mean i get that but you're the president so you really should respond so i think because of that a lot of people get super frustrated and aggravated and that's where you see a lot of the you know, the hatred and the backlash on him. And I think if he just went ahead and answered the questions every time, no matter how many times it's being presented to him, that would give people people a better understanding of just where he is mentally. Because it's like, you know, people want to know, are you going to change up your mind from what you said the last time? You know, people kind of want to see like, who are you really? Because a person can only keep saying the same thing so many times, either, either it is what it is or it's not. You can't you can't be over here saying this one day and then you over here the next day you saying something else and then you go back to this because we have seen that on the other on the other side now. I ain't we, that, that, we, that, 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 let's, let's talk about it now. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. You wouldn't even condemn David Duke for God's sake. Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Racism is evil, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists. Condemn the evil of anti-Semitism and hate. Our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. There be no tolerance for anti-Semitism in America or for any form of religious or racial hatred or prejudice. We must never ignore the vile poison 
of anti-Semitism or those who spread its venomous creed. How many times do I have to reject? I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. David Duke is saying to his supporters and followers, vote for Donald Trump. White supremacists are saying, vote. do you want those votes? No, I don't want them, and I don't want him to say it. I don't like any group of hate. Hate groups are not for me. You've got David Duke just here. A bigot, a racist, a problem. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay? Let me be clear again. I condemn the KKK. I condemn all white supremacists. I condemn the Proud Boy. A Trump's campaign told CBS News this publication is repulsive and their views do not represent the tens of millions of Americans who are uniting behind our campaign. So I'm not looking to repudiate David Duke. Sure. When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and mm -hmm. obviously it's never enough. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. Do you want white supremacists to vote for you? No, I don't. I don't. Not at all. How many times do I have to reject? Love. So Chip just threw a, a great um, comment up. He said that could be because Trump was saying things that weren't true. Should the commentator allow him to lie to the people? Well, Chip, there have been some lying on both sides. Both sides have not been honest. And so it appears that it's biased. One can say what they want unchecked, and one is attacked every time he says something that's not. So my thing is if we going to let's, let's do both people the same way. So right, wrong, and different. So, you know, some questions came up in the debate from two weeks ago mm -hmm. about um, about where was the Democrats going to kind of stack the house, and the question was evaded. Mm -hmm. um, Chip, I saw that too. Chip says he tweeted a lot that Obama killed Seal Team Six. Should the commentator let him get away with that? With Chip, I'm a <laughs> You know, I'm a government contractor, so this question here is actually kind of near and dear. There is a, uh, there has been some audio that has been released by a former CIA um, operative that has been working in the, yeah, he's, it's all, yeah, this is all public record. Mm -hmm. um, there's a CIA, and make sure I wouldn't tell you guys something classified. There's a CIA operative that has been speaking very freely about Benghazi, and uh, apparently, and you, you'll see this in the news recently. I just happen to have some inside track, but I'm not telling you anything illegal or um, classified. Um, there was some audio that's being released where um, um, where some questionable things are being revealed. This information has already found its hands in the media, and a post, supposedly a general, a very high-ranking general, has confirmed this information. And you can go look on you know where to look on YouTube, you'll find what I'm talking about. Um, and the the reports that have been released are pretty damaging. Now, my question is, are they going to release this information in totality? Um, the CIA operative, and I, I'm not an attorney, but it was some um, legal term that he used that he did not give this information himself. He gave this information through his attorney and that attorney trans transferred that information over, um, over to the authorities and without, I don't want to in any way sp spread misinformation, but the things that I saw, and I think we will all see in the coming weeks as it comes out in the news media, some pretty strong allegations and Oh, Benghazi and seal team six are, um, loosely related. And I'll say this, the, the Clinton foundation has been found in the middle, but I don't want to give you guys some, just keep watching the news between now and the end of the year. And what I'm saying will be confirmed. Okay. Anything you want to say on top? Cause I mean, you've seen the same thing I saw. So, um, yeah. And we're not here to, uh, this is not a bashing session. This ain't a bashing this is just, session. This so is we're not, happening. we're not gonna, um, you know, about the lies because both sides both be sides, li both sides be lying, bro. Both, 
you know, both this, sides be this, lying. This so is the question. I, I, I hate when I, I I'm not I'm not, I'm not gonna say the word hate. This, I don't I don't like when people only want to talk about one side of the cookie that's being crumbled. It's lies on both sides. But this is here's the question I want to hear. So we asked Trump about um, his denouncing of of uh, of white supremacy, and we we saw what happened. But the question I want to know as a black man. When y'all gonna ask Biden publicly about this 94 crime bill where he called us predators, super predators. And when they asked him this question again, a couple years ago, did he change his position? He said no. So as a black guy, I, I, we already know what Trump is, but I wanna know where you are, Mr. Biden. Um, has your position changed from the 94 crime bill um, currently? And where you at? Where, where are you at on this issue? Because from from my vantage point, that bill put more black men in prison for petty crimes. That coupled with the Clinton three strikes you're out. Mm -hmm. A lot of us went to jail for crimes and we're in there for egregious sentences for petty crimes because we got caught doing um, misdemeanors three times. So I got issues with that. So the fact that Trump is where he at, you know, I'd rather know what I'm dealing with than the man deceiving me. I'm not threatened by the KKK because I know where they are. I know their position. It's the person that I don't know their position that makes me nervous. I just That's just me. Just like, you know, it's the gun. It's not the gun you see that you're afraid of. It's the one you can't see. Got it. So we're back in the comments. Yeah. So Chip says it's not even close. Trump is documented over 100,000 miles. Okay. I mean, like I said, I haven't personally been keeping the score. I don't believe that what you're saying is wrong. But again, as a black man, when we talk about the racism issue, I want to know where Biden sits on the, um, on the 94 crime bill. And I just want to say this, as I see the comments, I, I see y'all. And just how I see y'all in these comments, I want to see y'all liking everything that we post because it's mighty funny to me that people want to make comments and they want to come in on the video on the live, but I don't see y'all supporting us and nothing else we got going on. So I'm just going to call the, the, the kettle black because that's just what it is. So let's go back to the comments. Boom. So, so you saying Biden isn't. So you saying Biden said, yeah, black go back. People were don't, super predators. Don't take my word for go. And yeah, I'll, I'll post it. I'll post the video tonight. He called black people, super predators. I watched this video. And I remember when this happened, I was a kid, but I went and watched the video again a, a few weeks ago. And I was waiting for someone in one of these debates to ask him about the super predators. And even um, during the debate, the last debate between Trump and Biden, um, Trump said, you talking about me, but you remember you called these people super predators. Yeah. That didn't, that, that's a real video. And then when he was questioned about this video um, a, a few years back, I remember Biden been running um, for, for re-elect, well, not re-election, but been running for this seat, um, for a couple of years. I mean, now, you know, the last year everyone gets, you know, out on the campaign trail, but he has been running. And when he was asked this question less than four years ago, now, do I recognize that people's opinions can change from 94 to today? Yes. That's been well over 20 years ago, 20 years, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, is that right? It's, it's been, it's been 20, it's been 20, almost 20 years ago. And can he change? Yeah. But when he was asked a few years ago, did he, did he, did he, um, did he, uh, feel remorseful for that crime bill? He said, no, Jonathan Cooper, Jonathan, do I need to pull the video up? Brother? I watched the video, man. Hold on. <clears throat> Let's see here. Well, I'm gonna say this. Everybody's entitled. To their own opinion. To their own opinion. But the video don't lie. And I don't have I, a reason to lie. This is documented. I mean, and again, we're just here to have healthy dialogue. This is not, you know what I'm saying, let's, um, you know, pull okay. one down. Okay, Jonathan, I read your comment. He said he did not call black people. So he didn't, but he, he insinuated. He talked about unsafe neighborhoods. We all know when we watch the news, we all know who committed the crime based on the narrative that comes across the news media. I've been black for 40 plus years. I didn't get black yesterday. 
So we know when someone is talking indirectly to us. <laughs> mm-hmm. But let me, I'm going to just, I'm going pl- to play the audio. Back to the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized, they literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets that society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. I'm the guy that said rehabilitation. When it occurs, we don't understand it and notice it. And when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system, there's the federal system, you serve 85% of your time. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rehabilitate. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change their behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail, away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would be, being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist and we must deal with that so no he did not jonathan you're right he did not directly say black people were super predators but jonathan you know as well as i do that he was not just talking about anybody let's see here just like uh let's see here 94 crime bill i'm gonna put this in my audio so y'all can hear it let this commercial go by We misrepresent the facts. No, no, I'm gonna let I'm gonna, we're gonna play it live. Okay. I'm let this commercial go by. In the United States. And at the time the Congressional Black Caucus was part of the debate around the crime bill. And the Congressional Black Caucus This ain't the one. Hold on, let me get the actual out of you. And um you, you can, just a comment back on what you said, what you said, Cooper. Um we already mentioned earlier in the beginning of when we first started talking about this, that there has been lies on both sides. So here we, go, here we, already, we mentioned that. The thing about how uh, perspectives change over time. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Now, you can go and you can find the actual original video that they asked him, was he, was he apologetic? He said no. Now, I'm going to give some facts that are really 
And I didn't turn, I didn't plan for this to be a black white conversation, but look at the statistics of how many people are in jail. When you look at, you look at how much of the population that people who look like me make up. We are 13% of the population, but there's 80 plus percent of us in prison. So you tell me <laughs> what was the intended outcome of this bill. Those are real numbers. And I can go pull the numbers up and give you the uh, actual f statistics, but we are the ones, my ethnic group are the ones who are being disproportionately in prison as a result of this type of legislation. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that um, police killings is not a, a insignificant fact, but the fact is a lot of people are in jail for way too long and for us to only make up less than 20%, 13 and a, and a half. For us to make up 80 plus percent of the prison population, that is a problem for me. So a combination of the 94 crime bill and a combination of the three strikes bill are problematic for me as an African-American man. And there's nothing that anyone can make me do to make me feel any differently about that. And I was alive. Someone said, I was alive when the 94 crime bill was passed. I was alive when the crack epidemic hit, hit New York city. I know who, and I'm not going to get on here cause I do have a government clearance. I know who took, who brought those drugs into those neighborhoods. But now that we have an opioid epidemic, now it's a national crisis. But when we people who look like me were, were, were taking drugs, which them taking drugs now and what they're doing now are not a whole lot different. That's just a now we have, we have changed the delivery, the supply chain mechanism to get these drugs into the street. So I don't let Biden off the hook. I don't let Trump off the hook, but this 94 crime bill for me needs to be repealed because people who look like me are being um, negatively disproportionate. I'm, it's not even half disproportionately um, being affected by this. So for you want to make me feel like, okay, I'm taking it out of context. I'm not. So no, he didn't call black people name, but who were intent versus impact are not the same thing. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the comments. Going back to the comments. Let's see. We got a lot of them. So I'm, I'm going to try to scroll back up because I don't want to, I don't want to miss everything that y'all said. Uh, let's see. Biden also sponsored affirmative action legislation that gave federal contracts to black business. Dude, yeah. I'm a government contractor. See, see y'all, y'all gonna piss me off. <laughs> I was at the white house earlier this year because black contractors are not getting the revenue we should be getting. I'm a eight, a company, which means I have a federal designation from the white, from, from the federal government to get set aside and I'm not getting them. And it's not because I'm not qualified. Don't talk to me about no affirmative action. Also sponsored business legislation to create minority set aside for That's black the, people. That was the eight A program. That actually came out under Reagan. Okay. So, all right, we already addressed misrepresenting the facts. Uh, but John, I can say you can't you can't see Trump. Trump. I'm not disacknowledging what Trump has and has not done. But what I'm talking about is this man been in office three years. And I'm not saying whether he's he doing a good job or not, but we had some of these issues way before Trump showed up. So for us to try to blame everything on him, I think it's just, it's crazy. The, 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 what, some of the stuff that's going on, some of the race relation problems we have are not new. Mm -mm. Some of this stuff ain't new. So when we try to use him as a scapegoat, should you, should you go out and vote? Yes. But to, to blame him for everything that's been happening in this country, this stuff been happening for a long time. Don't even get me on the 1865 Freedman Bank. When we had a bank in our community to uplift our people and they bombed the bank. Let's not talk about what happened in Anthony, Texas, when the, the thriving black community was bombed. Don't make me talk about North Carolina when we had another thriving community that was bombed and Black Wall Street. So don't make it seem like this just started happening yesterday because it didn't. It didn't start happening four years ago. 
we just just got into the public the public discord within the last couple of years. Facts. Okay. Uh, Biden is a slave master. Go look at his history and his brother and dad. They're still slave masters. And that may be true. And I don't. That doesn't even. Buy. What are you doing today to move the conversation forward? I do not think it's fair to blame anybody for what their parents and their ancestors did. Was it wrong? Yes. But that's like trying to blame me for something my great, 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 great grandfather did. I'm like, dude, I wasn't there. So I'm not, again, I'm a, I'm an equal opportunist. I'm not going to slam Biden's family for something he did. They did when he wasn't even around. That ain't right. Okay. I think you already addressed this. Um, Trump still refused to apologize for the Central Five for stating they deserve the death penalty. That question that was wrong was recently. That was wrong. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't a politician when he did that. I'm talking about what this man is doing now. That's all I'm saying. What he did in The Apprentice, what Biden did before he became in office, what Camilla did prior to their um, public service. I could care less. What are you doing today for the people? That's all I care about. Okay. Um, let's see. He was bastardized by the state legislators. Um, crime went down in our neighborhoods because of the 94 crime bill. Well, <laughs> and maybe in your neighborhood, Chip. Uh, if, you go to, if you go to Chicago today, these are real numbers. Five to 6,000 black men die each year. So maybe in your neighborhood, Chip, that's probably true. Dude, the 8 program came out after the Reagan administration, brother. I need to look it up for you. The reason why I know, because my, one of my, my best friend's father worked for the Reagan administration where they instituted the 8 program, and after he left, his office as a small business administrator, he started an 8A program. I could tell you his name, but he'd probably get mad with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> you know, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's sad to me um, that, you know, we got to keep going back and forth about these type of things, but guess what? You have your own Facebook page sure. and you have your own platform. So use it. If you feel so strongly, um, you know, and you stand so firmly and you know what you believe we, we're not, we just, we, we were just having healthy conversation. This was not to go, you know, on a back and forth, you know, and we can agree to disagree. It. Chip says the crime went down nationwide. My whole point was, is that that crime bill in prison, more black people, than any other ethnic group. We make up 13% of the population. That was my whole point. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were getting those contracts in the 70s, sir. Okay. Chip, are you a government contractor, sir? Well, I know there's been major issues with the government contracting um, sector in these past couple years. And you know, even down to like what's really happening in the SBA. I mean, it's just been a constant drag for uh, people that have those types of businesses to be treated fairly because even as a African-American uh, uh, person that has a government contracting business, um, as black people, a lot of times there are contracts that are being passed over and that are being given, given to the Native Americans and things like that. So it's not, it's not just in, you know, one particular area, like we're being affected in this, it's in this entire country. But when it comes to that role of being a government contractor, like a lot of contracts are not being given to black contractors that are doing things, doing things honestly, that are working the systems like they're supposed to be, that are federally compliant, 
we're still being passed over for a lot of the big wins. And I'm not saying that there aren't any wins happening at all. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is there are a lot of things for us. I know I don't want to really get into like reparations and things of that nature, but there are a lot of things for, for us that are still being held up and just not happening. And I believe, and it's, it's my own, you know, personal belief. They have a certain amount that they want to give to us. And then the rest, they designate out. There's a GAO and uh, there's a chip. There's a GAO report that came out, mm, I think 2015, that talked about how horribly ran the 8A program is. GAO is the Government Accountability Office. In the 8A program, that program was not just established for black people, it was established for minorities. But what's happening in that program is the Alaskan Native corporations that are tribally owned and the Native American corporations that are tribally owned are getting a disproportionate amount of the revenue. And those folks, the, the, the folks, some of the claims that are being made, um, and I don't want to get into all the history because everyone's not, not, not familiar with it, but some of the claims that are being made, made as an 8 a firm from a regular minority, you can get a, a $4 million sole source. But if you are a Native American owned tribally, and I recognize the challenges that they went through, or if you are a, uh, you are a Native, um, a Native American or Alaskan Native Corporation tribally owned, you can get a $20 million sole source without a JNA. That's a justification and authorization. With a JNA, you can get a $200 million sole source contract. How is that fair? Hmm. And that's without having another company join forces. Sole no, they source. can so sole source. Whole, wow. I lost a hundred and twenty million dollars behind this mess in 2018. So this is very personal to me. Behind company who wouldn't even qualify it, customers still having a hard time today as a result of that contract. And I'm gonna try to recompete and win that contract again next year. So I, I live this. <laughs> right. And that's why I was at the White House early this year because we just trying to level the playing field because the playing field ain't level. We talk about the, the affirmative action programs. They were, again, they were well-intentioned. But one of the other things is um, white women qualify as a minority. So you got white Absolutely. women who own eight A firms. Mm -hmm. I know a Irish woman today. She looks and passes as Caucasian, but she got an eight A firm. So these are the kind of problems we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That the, the playing field is not level. Got it. That's all I'm saying. And and that and that and that you know that's what Ice Cube. So he trying to he do. He tried to come to the table, to have the conversations, to present what he had, what he drafted up for his community, and just wanted to have a conversation. And he used his privilege of being a celebrity to go to the table with that. So again, we started this off talking about why does the black community feel like. It's okay for them to cancel ice cream. So here's 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 my here's my issue. I can care less what either side say. Put your money where your mouth fit. Whoever gonna put their money where their mouth fit, you ain't got to like me or not. Just do something for the community. Because here's the reality: our local and our state politics, we feel those effects way quicker than we would feel what happens nationally. Mm -hmm. So the most important vote you can make is in your state and your local elections. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. But as, as a collective, we have to stop being naive and stop being emotional. I don't care whether you love or hate Biden or love or hate Trump. Look at the issues and not how someone makes you feel and vote for whomever is representing your interest. That's all I'm saying. Right. I don't I don't think it's fair for um people to, you know. I voted for a specific person four years ago and financially I lost significant money mm. and that's so now I vote for who it's not going to make me feel good or not. That's, that's irrelevant. Who's going to push the things that are important to me forward. Mm -hmm. 
y'all heard me a few weeks ago that um, and when I worked for different organizations, I worked for, I started government contracting at 17, and I learned very quickly who you have in office determines the cash flow of that agency you're working for. And I worked for DOE, and when, the, and, and when the Democrats was in office, the money was flowing at DOE. When I worked for DOD and the, and the Republicans were in office, money was flowing. Now, that should not be the only basis for why you make decisions, but figure out what's important to you. If, you, if it's your religious beliefs, whatever it is, put all your stuff up on the table and come up with an objective decision. I don't care who you vote for. Just have a real reason for why you vote. And all politicians lie. I ain't met an honest one yet, and I know some personally. Me and Kena go to these fundraisers all the time, and we fund both sides. I'm going to fund the Democrats and the Republicans. At the end of the day, what the heck you going to do for Kirk and Kena? We was at a fundraiser a few weeks ago. I don't be always agreeing with these people. But we go to but, see what's going on. We, I'm going to go see what's going on. What's being said. Who's out here making moves? Who are they connected to? I talk to Democrats and Republicans. I fund Democrats and Republicans. I'm a business guy. I don't have time to be running around here throwing my wagon behind one person. I'm a king maker. We make kings. Come on, brother. I ain't got time to be sitting around here fussing about dumb issues. No, dude, we trying to stimulate the economy and create jobs. And I'm going to have a voice at the table regardless of who get in office. Because I'm going to give both of them a check. Wow. But see, we want to get on here and we want to fuss about dumbness. And ain't nobody stroke no check. Ain't nobody going to the table. Ain't nobody talking to both sides. I didn't talk to Cunningham. And I didn't talk to Nancy Mace. And regardless of who get in office, I'm going to be good. But we get these polit we get these we get these internet politicians who got all the answers and don't really know how this thing even really freaking work. Got to have some leverage. You got to have some leverage. This ain't about whether you like somebody or not. And that stuff y'all see on TV, I know some of these people personally. They fuss on TV, and they be right there at the Capitol Grill in D.C. eating, eating together. Mm. That ain't something I heard about. I've been doing this mess a long time. I had a political consultant I hired a few years ago, and he told me, Kurt, don't get caught up in the hustle. You better, you better create relationships on both sides of the aisle. You a business guy. I listened. So if, if Biden get in office, I'm going to be at the White House. If Trump stay in office, I'm going to go back to the White House. Period. Period. Yeah, we got we to gotta get our face seen. We got to be heard. But people want to get here and argue with, about the dumbness and don't be knowing the, the real issue. You done hooked your whole life behind Biden. Oh, you done hooked your whole life behind Trump. What if they don't get in office? How is what you want still going to get done? And nobody, anybody got no answer. What Ice Cube did was very noble. It was noble. If Trump, if Biden don't get in office, your whole plan, your whole world is shook. Come on, man. That be the stuff I be talking about. Did you strike any checks? any of these politicians that you running around here giving so much freaking allegiance to. If you're a Biden supporter, did you, did you strike Biden a check so he can get his chances of getting in office a little easier so he can run some campaigns? So when I get these hardcore, whatever side of the fence you freaking own, ain't nobody strike no check, but everybody got all this opinion. So now if your man get in or don't get in, depending on who you, who you supporting, now you mad. What did you do? Other than freaking vote. Man. <laughs> well. But if we think we're, we're, we're exercising our civic duty because we went down to the post. Dude, people died for your right to be able to vote. What else are you doing? That's true. Other than getting on social media, spreading stuff that you don't have facts about. Or they're so biased and one-sided. 
especially people who look like me. I made one comment on my social media page. I ain't stroked a check to nobody. And, it, and I was just like, wow, who knew so many people had such negative things to say? And all I, all I make, matter of fact, I, it was a statement. It was a statement. Both everybody, of them it, Everybody was watching the debate. So it was just like, wow. It, it made me really look at people differently. Like, wow, you can't even, look, you can't even say nothing. We these all things. got someone that we want to win. Some more than others. Me, I don't really care. I have my person I want to get. I want, to, I have a person that I would like to see win the election. But at the end of the day, it's not going to stop my life. Mm -hmm. If my preferred candidate does not get in office, I'm still going to do what I got to do. And guess what? Through this whole 2020, this year of 2020, the year of clarity. Oh. You know, one thing I can say, I have learned that, you know, there's some things that we're going to do differently in the communities as well and put some of our money in other places to help more people like us that that not like us, but that look like us. And that's what we got to do. We got to put our money where our mouth is versus being out here, buying the latest Louis Vuitton and Gucci. Let's start building up our own communities. How about that? How about buying? Because I'm gonna tell you something, it's going to get bad before it gets better. It's going to get worse. So what's going to happen? When the government really starts saying, hey, if you don't do this and do that, you can't buy groceries. If you don't do this and do that, if your child's not vaccinated, your child can't go back to school. And now you're going to have to pay for virtual learning. What's going to happen then? What are we doing to, you know, like really prepare our communities for that? So it's like, yo, we got to start buying commercial properties. I don't care if you buy the property and just let it sit there and don't do nothing with it till God tell you what to do with it. We're going to have to start having our own grocery stores, our own everything. Like, we got to think differently because I don't think this world's ever going to unite. I, I don't think, I don't, I can't, I don't, for us as black people, I don't see it ever being fair. Ever. But what But what are the people going to do about it? We're going to keep That's what I'm saying. What are we going to do about it? On any of our elected officials, and I don't care who you are voting for, they're not going to freaking save you. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. You put your you put your trust in Trump. He can't save you. You put your trust in Biden. He can't save you. What are you going to do? No one has done anything for us for as long as I've been on this planet. But we running around here thinking that Trump's gonna be the savior or Biden's gonna be the savior, dude. It don't matter who get in office. What are you going to do for you and your family? What have you done? Other than get on here and tell me that man lied a hundred thousand times. So what? All of them lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's the nature of politics. It's about spinning the story. The media lie. Both Fox and CNN. I don't care who you listen to. They're going to make it look like their preferred candidate does no wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for your life to improve because Trump didn't get elected or he did get elected, depending on where you at. Dude, come on. That's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, and I got so it. many people. Oh, life's going to be better when, um, when Biden get it off. Really? Is it? Is it? Do you really think this man got that much power that your life is going to substantially improve because of an election? Are you delusional? I trust no man. I trust God. Trump I trust had an no office, man. so all our problems. I don't trust fixed. none of them. Are you crazy? <laughs> Do you hear how that sounds? I trust. Oh none my of life, them. you know, oh, we're gonna be a better country. I heard people. Oh, life's gonna be so much better when Trump, when um, when Biden get in office. Have you lost your mind? Child, please. Since when mm -mm. has a politician done anything for you? Well, we're going to see how this thing work with what, what, what Ice Cube has presented. I'm just saying. Like I said, people can like or hate what I'm saying, but it's the fact. It's the truth anyway. I'm just glad somebody stood up that had that, like I said, that had their celebrity privilege that they can get in that space 
and come to the table with something because you can, you know, white people, they just don't, I feel like a lot of times they just don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to act. They feel like if they damned, if they do damned, if they don't because of how they was raised. And it's like, yo, we need somebody that look like y'all to come to the table and tell us how we supposed to think because we just don't know. And then you got this, see, 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 y'all, you, you just started me. Then we got this white privilege stuff going on. I seen this lady get down on her knees and kiss this man's shoe and, and, and ask for, ask, apologizing for her pants. I want to slap her. Ma'am, if you don't get up off your feet, if you don't get up off your knees, you ain't did nothing to these people. Now, all you can do is take self accountability for what you have done or have not done. But for you to be apologizing for your great, 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 great grandfather, that's crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that is crazy. We ain't even going to get into that. So Chip said, what would you, Jesus, Jesus wouldn't be a Republican or a Democrat. Personally, he would be looking for, um, Chip said, so what? All of them lie. Wow. They do. Dude, I know politics. I don't know what you do, Chip, and I'm not trying to get in your business. I know them. And I've seen them when they feel like it's going to get a vote, they're going to change their opinion. Yeah, we've seen this a lot with Mitt Romney. They called him the flip flopper. Dude, you didn't see politicians take one position, and when they find the polls, the, the, the polling data goes a different way, they change their platform. This is not rocket science. The fact is that two are not the same. We One has been helping us from the 80s. It's all a matter of opinion. Like I said, I got issues with the with the crime bill. I got some other issues too. I got issues with both of them. And the other has done nothing but lie to us and take credit for another man's work. Hey, it's all that matters. No, we ain't gonna talk about that because uh people take my work all the time and, and claim credit on it and know they heard it on the retail boss podcast and now they got a whole class on social media. But see, we ain't gonna we didn't come here to talk about plagiarism. Plagiarism and how people steal content. Yo, it's survival of see, the fittest in this I, world. If I want to make Honestly, that, if I want to make that, the if I want to make the line and taking credit a race issue, I could because see, black people made a lot of these inventions in this country. Come on, but now. we didn't have the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. There you go. So a lot of black people came with a lot of our inventions that we didn't get credit for. Yeah, we built this country, but straight up. The, but we don't have credit for them because we didn't we didn't invent the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. That's true. I'm just saying. So, That's like true. for example. So y'all want, <laughs> for example, we give Thomas Edison credit for the light bulb, but there was a man there named Lewis Latimer, a black self-taught electrical engineer who made the filament. If you don't have no filament, you ain't got no freaking light bulb, but he don't get the credit. So don't even get me started <laughs> about taking credit. Then mm -hmm. um, Ms. Arthur said African-Americans thought that their lives were going to be better when Obama was in office. We did. We did. Think that. We all thought hope and change. We did. We did. I ain't even gonna touch that. I voted for it. I did. I paid a lot of taxes. My tax bill went years up as a business owner. My health my health insurance went to <laughs> crap. I got employees. I watched my premiums. I got empl I got employees and I gotta pay the health insurance side. So when y'all go to get work, y'all only pay your two hundred or whatever your premium is. But the company's paying the other side of that. And I watched my premiums go up and the level of my coverage go down. I lived this. I had great insurance, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Guardian, and uh, I think VSP or something for vision. And I watched my premiums go up, and I watched my deductibles ex blossom. Well, now we, everybody got freaking high deductible insurance now. Mm -hmm. And if you get the, eight, the regular 80-20 insurance, it still sucks. I'm just saying. That's true. That's true. That's absolutely true. Dude, everybody who had companies before 2012 can attest to this fact. Your premiums went up. The coverage went down. Thank you, Tidra. That's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to be, we're just trying to be neutral. This, 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 we was just, we just wanted to give Ice Cube his big ups because he deserves it. And who is it? The Proud Boys? The Proud Boys. That's what you're talking oh, about. Oh, Lord, I cannot. The Proud Boys oh, is can't. actually ran by a Afro-Latino man. And they have a mixed group. They have a mixed, they have a mixed uh, collective among them. 
Just saying. Well. I didn't know that when Trump said it, by the way. I went and Googled, and then the the, the, the uh, organizer, the, the founder of that organization said, how can we be white racist when I'm I'm actually Afro-Latino? Mm. You can Google it. It's, it's out there. I think I posted it on my on my social media when I seen it because I didn't know either. Wow. Well, I, I think um so I ain't even come I can't <laughs> want to talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even talk about Jack. Well, right. I ain't even get that. We was gonna get we was gonna get into some other things that's being, you know, discussed because that's what the kitchen conversations is all about. Is what's happening in the world. Um from the perspective of us giving you guys how we feel about some of those things and also give you the perspective biblically about what we can do and what the word says that we can do to help, um, you know, change some perspective out here in the world with some of these things that are happening. And uh, we were going to talk about the a couple of things, pedophilia mm -hmm. um, and how that is being portrayed in the media um, I, mean, I am going to say one thing. Since we've been on this Biden-Trump thing, I did see one clip again that was very disturbing to me. And I do want to hear y'all opinion. Now, I am pro-LGBTQIA+. I believe people have the right to do and choose what they want to do. And I support your decision to do just that. But I'm going to say this. I have challenge when I hear um, someone saying that you can change your sexual identity at, at the age eight, of eight. eight and nine. Now, when you 18, 21, I'm not a scientist, don't claim to be one, and you grow and you decide that's what you want to do, hey, rock out, handle your business, that's what you want to do. But for you to start talking about giving children pre- okay. Um, children pre-puberty who change their to, mind to change their mind about this about their sexuality in terms of being transgender. I got I got problems with that. But see, that also goes back. It goes into the school systems and what is being taught to our children. What are we allowing our children to watch on on TV or in the media? How are they even being influenced to even think in this manner? Now, again. Kenan and I have no problem with you as a grown person coming up whatever decision you want. But my children, let's talk about me. My children want to be firemen. Um, I got boys and girls, firemen, fire, nurses, pop, doctors, lawyers. They didn't change their mind 40 times. So the, the fact that you're going to, you're going to stand by and endorse a pre puberty child to change their sexual identification at eight, not 18, not 21. I got issues with that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's really crazy. I, I can't support and I, and that. I don't, I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's healthy. When you got adults who change their sex, um, change their, their, their sexual orientation and then regret it. So how are you going to let, a decision of that magnitude be 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 done by an eight, nine, ten year old, yeah, man, and say, right. "Well, we're not going to let any discrimination do that." Audrey said, "That's what that's what President um well President no he can't call him President Lake. That's what Vice President Biden said. He had an interview, and you know I I don't say stuff that I don't have the facts for. I don't he just did, make up it. stuff. There was a there was a there was a clip." where um, a Caucasian mother got up with her child. She says, I have a two, two daughters and one of my daughters wants to change her sexual um, orientation. I don't think that's the right word, but that's what I'm gonna say. Um, she wants to change her sex. She wants to be a boy. And she asked um, Vice President Biden and his administration, how would that be viewed? And he said, she would not be discriminated against. And basically we're gonna, we're gonna protect her right to do that. I think that's crazy, but I also think it's crazy for the, for the parent. So this, mm -hmm. this, I'm not, I'm not saying Biden is wrong. I am saying that for us to be able to allow that, I think that's, that's not, that's not smart. 
I promise you, there is no reason to suggest that there should be any right denied your daughter or daughters, whichever, one or two, one, one yeah. your daughter, that your other daughter has a right to be and do. None, zero. And by the way, my son Bo passed away, was the Attorney General of the State of Delaware. He was the guy who got the first transgender law passed in the state of Delaware, and uh, because of a young man who became a woman uh, who uh, worked for him in the attorney general's office. If, I, if, if my child has to go to school every day, if he don't, that's truancy charges, how are you going to turn around and but let my child make an even more major decision of changing their sexual orientation? I think that's crazy. I do think it's wrong. I'm just going to say but, it. But let, but let little Bobby not go to school and see if you don't get locked up. But you're gonna you're gonna allow. So we have more we have more um, more of a standard when it comes to our education than we do about our sexual orientation at that age. The law won't let you not, not let your child go to school below a certain age. But we're gonna let them pick their pick their uh, their sexual whatever their sexual orientation is gonna be at eight. I don't think that should be influenced That's crazy. Um, by uh, you can Google it. I ain't making it up. I think they just need to stay out of you that. Leave that alone. Stay out of that. Leave that alone. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we let our politicians overreach. Because what comes with that, a child can't even handle it. Man, come on. You come into school dressed like a girl when last week you were dressed like a boy. Well, so what comes with that is going to be more... All the more, teasing. Yeah. Cyberbullying. Bullying. Come on, I mean, man. Just, that's not, that's just not smart. That's just not smart. I don't agree with that at all. Now, but I, I am giving my opinion. That, that, I don't, that, that's I don't agree with that. That's wrong. That's now, wrong. I'm, not, I'm not in disagreement with Lil Bobby wanting to change his sexual orientation. But at eight, nah, bro. Now, if you 18, 21, whatever the experts say is a reasonable age and they want to do that, that's fine. But at eight, nine, 10 years old, we all remember growing up and you didn't change your, what you're going to be when you grow up 20 times. So for me to be able to eight, nine, ten to be able to say, "Oh, mom, I want to be a boy," and right. you a girl, come on, man. And then now, That's crazy. now I don't like this. I don't like this backlash I'm getting. So now I'm gonna go back, and now I'm getting teased even more. Probably get my behind kicked too. You know, it's a whole lot that comes with that, and I don't think that that is that was. Um, I don't think that was a responsible. That's not response. responsible. But again. When you put your when you make when you put your fate in the hands of your politicians, you have you have abdicated your responsibility. I think that's crazy. So again, I don't care who gets elected. I am still gonna put my life in my own hands. I am not gonna feel down or out regardless of who gets elected because I have to take personal accountability for my own actions. And I'm watching and I'm and I recognize as an entrepreneur, Keenan and I both. I recognize that it matters. See, a lot of times you go to work for somebody, you don't feel these effects. Right. But when you a job creator, I ain't talking about a sole, a sole proprietor. Ain't, ain't no offense with the sole proprietors, but you just, it's just you. Mm -hmm. But now when you got other families depending on you, I think y'all heard me tell the story. My banker was giving me a hard time one day and I looked at him and I said, uh, how many called him by his name? I said, how many mortgages did you pay this month? He looked at me like, what kind of question is that? One. And I said, well, I pay X. And I told him how many employees I had. He said, oh. I said, yeah, because when, 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 I, when I pay them, I didn't pay mortgages, car notes, car insurance, um, retirement planning. you just worrying about you. So who we put in office, the entrepreneur feel it. Way more than a person who just go to work every day. I'm not saying that your life is not impacted because it is, but sometimes you don't feel the direct effects mm -hmm. of who we put in office. I do. Like I said, when our health insurance went to crap, the employees was coming to me saying, um, what happened? I right. said, well, ma'am, nothing happened. I mean, we, we, paying, we got the same service provider we've always had, but they've changed the laws. And so now our insurance don't get us as much as it used to. I have to have them conversations. Wow. So when they say stuff like, well, we're going to make sure. Um, and then, and then of course, then you got some employees who couldn't afford that, that, uh, that, that, that mandate. Here's the reality. I'm a business owner. I pay less taxes than my employees. Now I pay less personal tax. 
It didn't include all that all them them um them payroll taxes I had to pay as the employer. It didn't include them social security bills. So you only pay half. And you said, yo, if I got your check, that's half. I paid the other half. Mm-hmm. So, but personally, I paid less taxes personally than they did. But as a corporate owner, I pay more taxes. And and if you got more than 500 employees, which I'm not there yet, but if you have more than 500 employees, your personal tax liability is almost nothing. But look how much money you paid that is un this un, that was that you didn't even realize. I paid payroll taxes, I paid social which was social security, FICA, self employment tax. So when you get laid off from your job and you decide that um, I'm gonna go down here and fl- collect unemployment insurance, I paid that for you mm-hmm. to even have the right to go do that. Somebody did, if you work for somebody, whoever you work for, pay that on your behalf so that when you do decide to go down there, man, my job laid me off. I'm going to go get these unemployment. Um, but that wasn't your state just being nice to you. Mm-hmm. Somebody paid into that pool for you. You just didn't know it. I'm just saying. You got a state FICA or state unemployment and a federal unemployment. I got to pay both of them. So that when you decide you got let off from your job unfairly or COVID happens, we didn't pay it into that pool. So you can go get some, um, some benefits. Mm-hmm. So none of this stuff is free. We learn in the economics. There's no such thing as a free lunch. If it's free to you, you somebody didn't pay, but it. somebody paid. <laughs> so when we start talking about, we're going to have everybody going to go to college. I'm saying, ho, oh, oh, everybody going to college ho, for free. Ho. Oh. I'm, me, me tax, looking like taxpayers. We gonna be paying that. Business owners gonna get hit. Because if you, we're if you, and that. no offense, but if you don't earn income credit, you're not making enough. Mm-hmm. The system is giving you a check, so they come after the business owners, and we gotta put, we gotta pay, we gotta pay them things. Yeah, that's very. I'm true. just saying. That's true, and those are the things <clears throat> that you gotta think about. You know, when it when it comes to you know where your political views are gonna lie. You so know, that's some, I'm just saying like, that's, that's something else to also So I don't consider. have time to get emotionally invested in Biden or Trump. It's, let me just be clear. I don't have time to make a decision based on how well someone talked to me or what this person said. Let me look at your policy issues and see how this is going to affect the bottom line for me. It could be the difference between being profitable and not for me. Now, that ain't the only thing I use to make my decisions, but I just want you to be objective. I don't care. Again, I don't care who you vote for because at the end of the day, our, pl- our political process is a two-step process. We're going to vote, and then the electoral college going to vote. And if the electoral college can't work it out, then the Supreme Court going to basically say this is who the president is. So I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to make an educated decision to the best of my ability. But we live in a democratic republic, not a democracy. In a democracy, the majority rules. Mm-hmm. Now, if we were in a democracy, then actually only states who needed to vote would be uh, Texas, California, and New York, because those are that's where most of the population is in Florida. If we were in a democracy, but we're not in a democracy. And that's why we got the. We are in a college. democracy. We're in a democratic republic. When you go cast your vote in the electoral college, the electors in your state say, okay, I'm either going to side or not with my state. And they, this two parties, this two part system is going to pick our president. Right. We vote in November and the actual confirmation from the electors, I think happens in December. That's why the president will actually go in office until January. Right. And if for whatever reason that whole system breaks down, then it goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court makes the decision based on the evidence. They interpret law. That's why everybody's mad about this Amy Barrett because she's conservative, and so there's there's concern that if it does go, because it probably is, it's probably going to be a contested election, by the way, uh, if you have not figured it out. <laughs> so that's why the Democrats are upset with the Republicans because she's a conservative um justice and so more than likely Mm -hmm. when it comes to um the supreme court having to make a final decision she would rule on the side of conservatism and not liberalism but that's stupid at the end of the day she's her job is to um look at the law and make a decision as a as an interpreter of the law as a judge and they're gonna vote and 
It's like it's nine justices. They're going to do their vote. And whoever the majority go, if it's five to four, whoever got the majority, that's what they're going to decide. Period. Okay. All right. Well, we are well over our time. <laughs> we are an hour and 20 minutes in. We ain't in. Get none of the stuff I thought I was going to talk about tonight. That's all right. <laughs> we'll save it for another time. But, um, you know, again, we just wanted to have some, some healthy dialogue. It did go kind of back and forth a little bit. Um, I respect everyone's opinion and how they feel. And I want, I'm not going to look at anyone any different. And it's amazing to me because that happens sometimes when people have a difference of opinion and it's somebody you personally know. And a lot of friendships, like me and my friends, we don't talk about politics. No, we don't bring them up. Even if it tries to kind of get like slipped in a little bit. Nah, like, nah. we're not going to talk about it. Family. I don't talk about politics with family. I don't, I don't, you know, and, and it, it's one of those things that it's a fine line. It and really I do. don't, I don't, I don't think that people can come back after saying something that they may have said out of their emotions right. for <clears throat> those particular, you know, things. It, it's just hard to bounce back from. So, you know, that's not something that I really, you know, we really subscribe to. Right. Um, <clears throat> but again, we, we respect everyone's opinion. Absolutely. And we thank you guys for, you know, joining and the I would say kitchen this. conversations this evening. Before we appreciate we, that. I want to finish this one comment. And when we do talk about politics object um, openly, we try to be objective. We try not to. Now, we do have someone that we're voting for. Like, hey, Miss Ernestine. Do. I'm sorry. No, no, you could. Hey, Miss Ernestine. We, as we all do. But when we come on here, we try to be as yes, objective ma'am. as possible yes, to ma'am. both sides. Because both sides got their own challenges. Issues. Absolutely. And all the politicians do, because we, we all human. So for you to think that your preferred candidate can do no wrong, it's not true. Absolutely. That's true. Yes, ma'am. We did, we we said what God wanted us to talk about. <laughs> I guess so, because we really were not going in that we direction. We had no intentions of talking, at all. About, <laughs> talking about politics. But I'm, I'm going to say this, too, in, in closing. A lot of the times our politicians don't necessarily vote with the people. They vote for who got them elected. That's why it's so important when you do get to a position in life where you can support your preferred candidate that you do because at the end of the day, they take care of the folks who helped them get in office. So mm -hmm. you being passionate about said candidate, mm -hmm. you don't really have any influence of that candidate unless you put money in his pocket. Have y'all noticed that every time we look around, we, we bailing out GM and the banking industry. Why? Because those industries put a lot of money behind these elected candidates, not just the president, but even the senators and the representatives. So that's why they always keep getting bailed out. This ain't just, this don't happen just because mm -hmm. these industries have lobbying outfits oh, yes. that spend a lot of money oh, yes. pouring into these elections. Again, when I talked about earlier, they fund both sides. The only people who we worrying about here, concerned about who get in office, is the is the normal citizen. The business not already secured. They bet they gonna be good regardless. Mm -hmm. They've already. Let's let's talk about it. Why did the LGBT community gain so much power? They had they had they had people. They had lobbyists lobbying for them, right? Who who lobbied for them? Why is marijuana becoming legal? They've been Lobbyists. lobbying since 1994. Don't quote me on that. This ain't just happened because. Yeah. These are called social movements. Anybody who's stood, who studied politics knows that these are social movements you're happening. Black Lives Matter is a social movement. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to stop thinking that things you see in in the news, oh, that just happened. No. <laughs> Everything you see, somebody planned that. Period. Right. Politicians don't just run. They are selected. How you raise a billion dollars to run for office? Oh, you think you think the, the normal people, the, the regular citizens raised all that money? I think they said the other day Biden had raised like another three hundred million. Oh, you think y'all gave thirty five dollars and raised that money? Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. So so get off these soapbox of thinking that your politician is for you, your politician is going to vote for the people 
who put him in office. If his money, so I'm gonna say this: you seen, you seen. Um, there's a lot of debate about fracking. The oil and gas industry is a different alternative form of extracting oil and gasoline. Well, there's a lot of conversation about fracking because the fracking industry puts up a lot of money. They wouldn't be talking about this. Mm-hmm. If there was not some money being exchanged, we keep talking here about these, um, the vaccine. Why are we talking about this? Is it because, oh, we want people to get well? Do they want people to get well? Yeah, but Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKind, Eli Lilly, they putting up a lot of bread. Yes. And that's why they're in the public discussion. People, man, people get me when they be thinking, oh, no, man. It, money and influence moves politics. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you, if your back gets scratched in the process, then cool. But if you ain't putting no bread up, it's a strong possibility right. your interests are not going to be taken care of. That's true. Wow. That's why they they have outlawed a lot of the things they used to allow in lobbying, but they still doing what they want to do. How is it all your pres- all of your senatorial candidates come into office doing okay? Mm-hmm. And within a few years, they are multi-millionaires, hundred million. How you think that happened? Right, because the Clintons was trying to take stuff out the White House. When Y'all they remember left, that? When they left the White House, <laughs> they said that the people was they were stealing Ooh. the art and stuff off the wall. Now the Clinton Foundation is worth like three, like five hundred million dollars. You think that just happened? You think people just oh people just giving? That ain't no. Ooh. That is not how that works. It's deals being made. Why is it all of our our previous senators? Now we ain't talking about the presidents. Previous senators start these foundations. Mm-hmm. The Ford Foundation, Heritage Foundation, the Carter. Why you think that? Mm-hmm. That's how they get the bag. Because mm-hmm. now I, I I built all these relationships when I was in office, and now I can do favors for you. And so. We don't call it a bribe, but I'm gonna give a I'm a I'm gonna give a philanthropic donation to your organization. You didn't ask me for the money, That's good. but you did something for me, good and so now I'm going to support your philanthropic cause. Mm-hmm. Obama got a foundation; all of them got one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. I just need y'all to pay attention. And stop getting so caught up on these identity politics. Oh, he like black people. Oh, he don't like black people. Oh, he like the gays. Oh, he don't like the gays. Man, that's a smoke screen. Look past that and find out what's really going on. That's why I asked y'all earlier. Did you give you did you give did you give these people that you so passionate about? Did you give did you write Biden a check? Did you? <laughs> no. Right. But you'll be the first one wanna fight when when I talked about that 94 crime bill. You ain't stroked the man nothing. I think Miss Ernestine got a, had brought up a good point, and you know this is something. And I know we over time. See, this Ernestine, Miss Miss Ernestine, Ernestine, this come is on, man, I'm we, trying to get off. This I was line. talking about this earlier today because I saw a uh, young lady. Um, make a post, and she is a celebrity as well. Her her husband uh, See, is would, a praise and worship I was, leader. I was trying. To I'm not, not going to mention names, this. but anyway. She had she 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 had her issues with the Christian Church, and so I'm gonna read your comment, and then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna see, Miss so, Ernestine, I wasn't gonna talk about that. What you're that saying, today. Uh, Christians must pay attention to the platform. God is looking at the platform. He is going to hold you to the platform. Killing babies is not the platform God is in favor of. People must pray. And guess what? I totally, I, I, I totally agree. I agree. With I you. totally agree. So. The young lady's comment was, and she's a very well-known Christian because her husband is a praise and worship leader comment. all over this country, okay, comment, everywhere. See. He's Let's known everywhere. So she basically was saying that <laughs> she was un- she was upset and she was bothered, like her soul was grieved that the Christian church would, n- would not back up Black Lives Matter, but would back, would back up... Um, a president that was uh, trying to abolish abortion. So it's like you care about one life, but then you don't care about another is basically what she was saying. And I was just like, sis, that's not what this is about. First of all, black lives matter is not about black people. Now we, the word, now, the word the, means the term something. 
The term Black Lives Matter is a true statement. Black lives do matter, but the organization itself, it's a Marxist organization. Any Christian organization that backs that up, I have a problem with you. And you're going to have to answer to God for that. Period. It's funded by, some, I seen a post this morning. We didn't talk about this. We, got have, a lot we, of, we did a whole nother live about that. by George you, Soros. If you didn't watch it, then go watch it on YouTube, Kitchen Conversations with Kurt Look Gina. the name up. We talked about George Soros, him being a Marxist. We talked about them trying to destroy, the the, the basically destroy the family. Yes. And we, we talked about all of oh, those things. They changed their website. So when you look at our old video on YouTube, you will see oh, the original right. website where they talked about the destruction of the nuclear family. Yes. What is the nuclear family? Right. And they Husband told, yes. and a wife. They've totally changed, they changed their website. I went and looked at it a couple the weeks wording. ago. The whole website didn't change. Yeah, they were catching too much flag. Everybody was talking about the destruction of the nuclear family. So my thing is you already done showed your hand. And then there's another video with one of the, and we, we talked about again how the folks who are the founders are not the founders. We're going to be careful because they will take down our video. Oh, yeah. They, oh. <laughs> They're not the founders. I showed y'all on the Secretary of State's website. Who the, who, the, who the founders of the company were. It's all public record. I showed mm -hmm. this. Go back to the YouTube video on, um, is it on Kurt and Kenny? On yeah. Kurt and Kenny YouTube site. It's all there, documented. I go through. It's three white men who own the company. Those young ladies own the hashtag. We also showed where all, it's all there. You can go and follow along with the video and see all the information we showed. Mm -hmm. We also showed where the money was coming from, George Soros. And that money is not going into the black communities. They they got their own thing going on. It's all about, you know, the it's LGBT. About the, it's BTQ about the transgender and transgender. And guess what? Which I, is, I have no problem with that. But don't use this and say that you're raising this money to go into the black communities and help the black communities when ain't nobody seen. I want to know who have seen representatives of Black Lives Matter go into low income communities and supply food, give, I mean, I just want to know because see the churches are the ones that people go to churches be given. We've been out here for the longest giving out turkeys, mm -hmm. giving out baskets. Well, let me tell you something. My grandmother, the late, uh, uh, Reverend Catherine Simmons from English town, New Jersey, used to have her grandchildren running this with her doing the share program in Jamesburg, New Jersey for Mount Airy Missionary Baptist Church. Cause see, now it's going to get personal for me because I was a child helping my grandmother with the programs that she was putting in place to help the black community. I was out there ringing doorbells, door to door, giving people boxes, people that didn't have hardly no food to eat. We used to go to North New Jersey, at four o'clock in the morning, my grandmother would rent a U-Haul that half the time ain't have no heat. We'd be in the back. Her grandkids, she, all she had was us. We in the back wrapped up in blankets, in sleeping bags, going to North New Jersey to get food to help feed these people. So you cannot tell me that the black community in the black church has not been there for the black community. It's not, that's not true. So for her to say, well, I don't understand how you can vote based on policy. We're voting based on biblical principles, sis. No, no. She said, she said, I don't see how you can not, how you, how you can ignore all the things he's doing and vote for policy. And vote for policy is, yeah. But thank you for, so for fixing that for I, me. We got some Christians that's watching us. So I, I have to at least do this. I'm just saying. Just saying. It's some things as a Christian that I have a issue with. When I look at my Christian values. I do not separate my Christian values from the voting board. So I am pro-life. I do understand. I think they should have some things for people who decide to who decide to abort their child. I don't agree with it for a lot of reasons, for 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 my for more reasons, but I think they should have something for them. If that's what you decide to do. So you don't you're not doing the clothes hanger thing. So I'm very much pro-life. When I look at the Old Testament and you look at what was happening in Moses' day where people were sacrificing their babies to Moloch. Yes. Moloch was a sick, was was a demonic entity that they, right. were, that they were worshiping. Right. Same around the time when you had Korah, they was building these golden images. That's what was happening. They were sacrificing their kids. That's still happening. So that's what we was going to talk about. 
that's still happening today. In the latter terms of those pregnancies, you know, and like and, yeah, and 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 full the, grown babies. One of the one of the campaigns, one of them are willing to abort at almost full term. I got I got challenges with that. Then we got um, Israel. The Bible tells us, and I think it's in Ezra two about praying for the peace and safety of Israel. So it is scriptural to support Israel. Um, one of the things that this current president did, love him or hate him, he moved Jerusalem as the um, capital of Israel. Um, what's the what's another thing? Um, so you got pro-life, you got peace of Israel. Um, there's a third one. I'm, I'm just kind of doing this off the top of my head. Israel pro life. I forget y'all. Y'all caught me. I've been I've been I've been working too hard today. <laughs> oh, and then you know I, I don't have a problem with the um with your sexual orientation, but you know God has some very strong things that He says about homosexuality. Now again, I ain't got no issues with anybody. And when I said I became a Christian, what I was supposed to be saying was I was going to put down my own desires and take on his. So some of these things I mentally say I have challenged with, but I'm supposed to be coming more like him. And so I'm supposed to take up his charge and drop my charge. That's, you know, that's me. You know, that's the sacrifice. That's the, that's the confirming of my mind. And some of these issues, some of these stances I had have been an evolution but I try to be more like him in the earth. I don't judge people for what they do, but I'm supposed to, as his representative in the earth, and anybody who says they're a saint, we're supposed to be trying to be more like him. Mm -hmm. So for me to support some things, I just fundamentally, based on my on on my Christian views, just can't do. Now, if you want to do that, that's your business. And I'm not going to judge you for doing that. All I can do is be responsible for Kurt, but I cannot support late-term abortions. I can't. I can't support um, folks who are not going to support Israel. I, I can't. I can't support um, folks who are going to make it easier for um, for, for I, some stuff I just can't support. And like I said, I'm not trying to offend anybody because I genuinely don't care what people do in their own personal life. But as a Christian, I think we have a moral responsibility to try to uphold God's principles to the best of our ability. And that's that's all we're trying to do. Right, and we ain't out here trying to sell religion. Right, I'm so not a religious go, person. Let's go ahead on and get because we straight. can talk about how religion has in in bondage people too, oh, and how gosh. people have twisted scripture. So we talk about that on another day. Another I'm day. a follower of Christ. <laughs> I do not subscribe to some of these organized religious principles because they have been used to manipulate and control people. Mm -hmm. I'm after relationship with right. God, not none of this. All these rules. Now, sometimes we need rules. I ain't even gonna say. Sometimes we need structure. But sometimes people just go too far. Let's yeah. talk about what, what happened with, with your boy, uh, Jim Jones, with them drinking the juice. Come on, that was that was them <laughs> abusing oh, I religion. To, I ain't mean to laugh with that. You know what I'm saying? That was but them no, abusing I, I religion. I get it. I get what you're but, saying. You know, like yeah. I said, again, I ain't got no heaven or hell to put nobody on this live That's in. True. So you do what you want to do. All me and Ken are trying to do is just be the best representation of God we can. We are flawed individuals. We are not perfect. We missed the mark. But doggone it, we trying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, I, I think I've tried to end this live several times, but, um, you know, we're over time. So, you know, we thank you guys. We appreciate you guys for listening and tuning into Kitchen Conversations with, with Kurt and Kina. And we'll be back. We'll be back. With we'll some, talk about next week. We're we planning on talking about Yeah, today. the other topics <laughs> we wanted to get into, uh, we'll get into those things. Um yeah, next week we'll get into And they would be things. very controversial as well. As well. Uh, that's what we do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to love us or hate us, I guess. Damn. It is what it is. Well, thank you guys. Have an amazing evening. We'll be praying for you. Y'all make sure y'all pray for us too because things are definitely crazy and we can only trust in God. And that's just. I ain't taking that. that vaccine, Tidra. Oh. That Tidra. Tidra, so you keep messing, messing with, with me. you. We're not messing with you. T.J. on this thing longer than we were supposed to be <laughs> in them comments. But I'm not taking no vaccine. It's not no, happening. That's definitely not happening. I don't care who the president is. Who say what. We I, ain't, know, I we, ain't taking we, no we, vaccine. We're not doing that. I'm not doing it. We're not. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for, for watching. And watch and Utopia. In. <laughs> Curtis promoting Utopia. Watch Utopia. If you guys have not watched 
And I was going, we was going to bring this up. If you've not gotten an opportunity, if you have Amazon or Fire Stick or whatever, watch Utopia. It was very eye opening and it's amazing to how it's now there's a lot of parallels and they got a lot of People underlining, for the vaccine. underlining so things in this particular um, series. You know, I know everybody's home and doing a lot of Netflix, but if you want to watch something good, watch that because it was very eye opening. It's kind of prosthetic based on what I've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it definitely was. Yes, ma'am, Miss Ernestine, thank you so much. Yes, my grandmother was definitely a pillar of her community. She loved God. Uh, she raised us to, to, to learn how to serve from a very uh, young age. I would not be the successful woman that I am today with, without her tutelage and just pouring into me and pushing me and i'm here now like i just it's it's amazing when i sit back and look at my life because she was such a huge influence her and my mom was such huge influence um influencers in my life and you know and my siblings and my whole family and we are now we're taking on that torch we're carrying the torch we are pushing that legacy um i'm, I'm speaking from the terms of myself and my siblings my, my sister and my brother uh, we're definitely um walking you know in those footsteps and it's not always easy but when god has given you a charge over your life and it's been predestined from generation to generation you have to do this and this is this is why this is why we're here this is why i'm here and i'm always going to be a representation um of the kingdom of heaven period point blank in the story that's just who we are and i'm just i'm blessed to have um this man right here in my oh, life so sweet. my husband my boo thing and you know there and, and don't get it twisted and i know y'all watch us and you're like oh they never disagree we disagree on a, a lot. lot of these issues some of these things we talking about here we don't even talk about it now because we <laughs> see the world differently we do see the world differently we we, we come from two totally different um, backgrounds and that's the thing you know uh, those are things to take into consideration when people come from different backgrounds they just have different views on things so we done had it out in we, here we agree to this good morning y'all a lot okay I say, lot. no we're just not gonna talk about this right right absolutely and then things that we can um compromise on we compromise on and then other things we just leave it alone and guess what i don't argue with him he don't argue with me i give it to the lord i said god that's your son you need to deal with him with that because this right here ain't right. And, it, and then he comes around and he does the same to me. Oh, yeah. I'm going right. to argue with Kena. <laughs> like, no, that's your, that's your child, man. You deal with her. She, she tripping. Absolutely. Amen. All right. So we're going to let y'all go. Have a good evening. We'll see you guys back again next week. We're going to talk about the rest of the topics we want to talk about. But we won't be talking about politics <laughs> again. About you, get, you got that? <laughs> right, that's a wrap on that cap. Y'all have a great evening. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.